If you're looking to take over your vehicle's dash with a large floating panel radio head unit with all the possible features, then look no further. This is everything you could ever want in a head unit, including onboard navigation. Or is it? In this video, we'll be taking a look at Kenwood's Exelon Reference DNR1007XR, a 10.1 inch car audio head unit. So don't go anywhere. What's up all, my name is Josh, I'm with Breaker Stereo and Performance. Welcome to the YouTube channel that reviews, demos, and goes over all the best in aftermarket auto accessories, like car audio, suspension, performance, and more, because we don't drive stock. And if you're like us, where stock just doesn't cut it, then join the Breaker's Upgrade Nation by subscribing to this channel. This, my friends, is currently the most expensive floating panel head unit on the market coming in at 1899 This is Kenwood's first version of their floating panel head unit, and it came out about a year and a half ago. But this radio has been on back order for the majority of that time, and there has been no mention of a replacement as of yet. But with Alpine on their third generation of floating panel head units and Sony on their second, does this radio still stack up against these newer head units, or is it lagging since it was released that long ago? Let's find out. Now in this video, we're gonna be going over all the features, unbox it to see what it comes with, fire it up to give it a real-time demo, and finally, we'll be going over the pros and cons list along with our overall rating. So with that being said, let's jump right into the features. So this is a digital multimedia receiver with navigation provided by Garmin. It's a 10.1 inch HD capacitive touchscreen, 1080 by 720. It has AAS display technology for a wider viewing angle and a bonded optical display for less glare. Adjustable depth, height, and pitch of the display provides the needed flexibility to fit in most vehicles. Wired and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and Wi-Fi certified. Also wireless mirroring for Android phones, HDMI input so you're able to mirror your iPhone as well using some cables. Customizable display background and widget control, ambient lighting and a multi-function volume knob. Plays high-res FLAC, WAV and DSD files on a USB drive. Built-in HD radio tuner. Included Inrex weather app with a five-year subscription. And this has a double DIN chassis. Also Bluetooth for hands-free calling and audio streaming and built-in LDAC for high-res wireless audio streaming with select Android phones. Now, as mentioned previously, this does have built-in navigation provided by Garmin, and the maps include US, Canada, Mexico, Puerto Rico, and the US Virgin Islands. And you also get three years of free map updates. Also, 3D terrain viewing and photo real junction view. Audio video features include the ability to choose between a 13-band graphic EQ or a 14-band parametric EQ. Also, digital time alignment. And the stage EQ compensates for speakers mounted in a lower position. The built-in drive EQ boosts specific frequencies to compensate for road noise. You also have a subwoofer level, phase, and two-way or three-way crossover controls. Expandability includes compatible with Sirius XM satellite tuner. Now, the tuner is sold separately. Steering wheel control compatible, adapter sold separately, and direct connection and control of Kenwood's dash cam, model number DRV-N520. Inputs include a rear USB, again, an HDMI input, a rear AV input composite on the RCA video and a 3.5 millimeter for the audio, also an SD card input, now that's used for the Garmin software, four camera inputs, including two high def inputs. More on that a little bit later and also an AV output. Six channel, five volt front, rear, and sub RCA preouts, 22 watts RMS, and 50 watts peak per channel. Works with iDataLink Maestro modules, retaining factory features in a wide selection of vehicles that include displaying of engine performance, TPS, climate controls, and more. Also K40 and Escort radar detector ready. And finally, a two year warranty. Okay, let's get to the unboxing. We have GPS antenna, main harness, USB extension, owner's manual, and then these are the mounting brackets and covers needed. And then you also have your hardware, some more hardware here. All right. All right, so as you can see, this is a double DIN opening. 
All right, so we'll go over that in a minute, the connections on the back. All right, so we got a nice big bold screen here. We have some buttons here on the bottom. You have the home button, nav button. Here's your volume knob. Um, there's also a menu button here. Well, actually, if you tap this, it will go to your menu and there's also ATT, attenuation. And then you have a couple buttons here. Also, this will activate the voice command. All right, a beautiful screen when this thing lights up, you guys will see here in a minute. Now we do have a bezel that goes around here, okay? So when this radio first came out, I don't think it was a big deal. Uh, people weren't complaining about the bezel too much, but now we're used to bezel-less things like iPhones, um, Androids. Also, our TVs are pretty much bezel-less at this point. So now our eyes are trained to kind of look for that. So when you see this thing will light up, you'll see this bezel that's around the screen, okay? Um, but I can say this, once it's on, you really don't notice it, but at first glance, definitely it stands out. So we have a couple different mounting options here. Once this goes in, Okay. You're able to adjust the pitch, okay? Um, and then you're also able to move this in and out, and then you can also move the screen up and down. So this will give you the ability to place this in most vehicles without it blocking a lot of things. Okay, so the bezel measurements on the side are gonna be about 5 8 or 16 millimeters. On the top, definitely a lot less, about 3 8 or about 9.5 millimeters. And on the bottom, if we're not counting the buttons, a little more than three quarters, so about 19 millimeters. And since we have the measuring tape out, let's go ahead and measure the screen. Horizontally, we're looking at about 10 and a quarter, or 260 millimeters. And our vertical measurement is uh, six and seven eighths, or 171 millimeters. So we have our GPS input here. We have the USB, uh, standard AM FM antenna input. We have our three sets of front, rear, and sub RCA preouts. This is your AV input for your audio side, and that's gonna be a 3.5 millimeter connection, so you will need an adapter for that. You have your proprietary Kenwood dash cam input here, your main plug here. This is for your iDataLink Maestro RR. You have a recessed HDMI input with this plate that goes over the top, so this is nice. So you basically unscrew the plate, put your HDMI in, and then screw the plate back over it, and that way it's not gonna tug loose. So here's XM inputs here, and then this also is for your iDataLink input. And then there is on this side, the mic input for your Bluetooth. Okay, and here you have your AV audio output. Okay, so that is also a 3.5 millimeter plug that you're gonna need. Again, that's just audio, and then your video is gonna be your composite here, okay? So let's talk about the camera inputs for a second. All right, so camera says this does have four camera inputs. Now, of course, you have your backup camera. You also have your dash camera, and then you have a third view camera, and then there's also a video input that can be used as a camera as well. Okay, so there, there are your four camera inputs. Now, uh, a lot of times people think that we're able to use these other two cameras as side cameras, which you can do if you wanted to, no problem. But the thing is this, is there's no trigger on this radio. So let's say you are doing left and right cameras for blind spots. There's no trigger on this radio that will allow those cameras to override when you hit the turn signal. So just keep that in mind. Now there is an adapter that you can get from various companies that will allow you to do so. It's a multi-camera adapter. I believe Metro makes one and maybe even Pack. But again, that's something that you're gonna have to buy separate if you wanna use blind side cameras. And in that case, you wouldn't be using all of these inputs anyway, you'd be basically just be using one. So normally those adapters are one in and let's say four out. So this is our home screen. As you can see, this is where we have all our sources. We have our wireless mirroring here, HD radio, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, iPod, USB, SD card, HDMI input, AV input. Then we have your standby button here accessory control, vehicle information. Now those will be used if you are using the Maestro RR or the RR2. Navigation buttons here, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, telephone, and then satellite radio, media player, Bluetooth. Okay, so your radar detector input. So if you have a K40 or radar detector that will plug into this, you'll be able to see and control it from there. Um, gauges, climate control, and parking assist. Again, those are for the Maestro RR features. All right, let's go back. Let's take a look at the audio features. All right, so let's tap here into audio. Here we have our crossovers for our front, rear, and subwoofer. Uh, right now we're selected on front. So we have 30 hertz to choose from 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100, 120, 150, 180, 220, and 250. So that's gonna be the same for the front and the rear also on this sub. Now you're able to pick the slope as well. So you can either go, I wanna say it goes down to six. Yep, so six dB per octave, 12 dB per octave, 18 and 24. 
okay on the sub let's see if it does the same yes okay so basically on the sub you have the same points and also the same slope here you're able to pick what size speakers you're using so on the front you can pick six and a half and so on and so forth in the rear same thing speaker location lower door on dash under dash and then tweeter small medium large okay you also have a, a tweeter attenuation here as well so that'll drop off those really high frequencies okay next we have the eq so this is the graphic eq as you can see and this is pretty responsive so if you want to run your finger across it you can do so or simply pick the band and move it up and down also use your presets here as well that you can store now this does have a parametric eq but we'll go over that here in a minute you also have listening position so you can use this uh, very simply by just tapping the position you want to focus on or if you want to do a full time alignment you can get in here and adjust from the speaker to the headrest driver side headrest to each speaker and that will do that for you and then you also have an attenuation level as well for each speaker including tweeters so that's nice okay next we have your fader and balance and also your zone control all right that's self-explanatory there but on zone control this is how this works let's say for instance you have a monitor in the rear for the rear passengers okay and you wanted them to watch a movie in the rear and then also use the rear speakers to play that movie here's how you can do that you just select dual zone and then from here you just select av and now just so you know there is no other option so you can't go in here and go okay i want to play apple carplay in the rear and something else in the front won't do that it will only do the av in okay so you plug your dvd player into your input here and outputs to the rear monitor select dual zone hit rear source av in and then it'll play obviously through the rear monitor and then also the sound will come out through the rear speakers and then on the front source you can choose what you want so you have apple carplay here the radio serious so forth okay and then you also have the rear volume separate as well all right so next we have volume offset so this will allow you to set the volume for each source so when you're going through sources and let's say one's louder than the other then you can make the adjustment so that when you're switching sources there's not that much of a volume difference next sound effect all right so here we have our bass boost loudness um, you have the drive eq again that will reduce road noise as you're driving down the road space enhancer supreme realizer the stage eq again this will bring up the sound level for your front stage depending on where your speakers are located and you can just simply mess with this you know listen to some music you know toggle back and forth and see what sounds best for you all right so you can turn the parametric eq on here and then you have this warning and basically what it's saying is if you don't know what you're doing and you're not sure what these adjustments are might be better just to use the graphic eq that they default to but if you do know what's going on with the parametric eq go ahead and proceed and then we'll go ahead and set this up so I can show you guys how this works. All right, so basically you have nine bands of equalization. A parametric EQ will allow you to pick the frequency in which you want to boost. Okay, so let's say for instance, we are adjusting point one. Now point one right now is adjusted at 44 Hertz. So I can pick the frequency that I want. So if I didn't like 44 and if I wanted to do, let's say 55, then I'm using that frequency. In a graphic EQ, band one will be preset and you won't be able to adjust it. One of the differences, the other difference is you're able to choose the Q. Now, on the Q, what that does is it will widen or narrow that frequency in which it's boosting. So as you can see, I am decreasing the Q, and you can see it's a much wider band. If I increase the Q, it gets narrower. All right, so that's what that does. So on the top here, let's take a look. These are your nine common points. You also have two separate front points in which you can choose. This will go across the band. So if I choose, let's say, point two, and I want it to uh, boost, let's say, you know, 12 and a half thousand hertz. I'm able to do that here just for the front. Also on the rear, you have two points. And then on the subwoofer, you have one point. So this is very similar to the bass boost that most monoblock bass amplifiers have. So in this case, if I wanted to boost that 44 hertz frequency, okay, I'm able to do that or I can decrease it. Or if I didn't like 44 and I wanted to go a little bit higher, I can do, you know, 49, okay, or 50. So most of those bass amplifiers We'll have a bass boost usually it's going to be around 45 or 50 okay so this is very similar to that okay so that's pretty brief there are some other filters on here uh, that we won't talk about just for the sake of keeping this video short so let's go back so that's just a general description on how to use this parametric eq all right and then you also have your auto memory here all right so let's go back okay and we'll go to the connections and av so here you have your device list for your bluetooth wi-fi setup okay and then your av out you can assign that here to your av in 
So the AV out, just so you know, will not do HDMI. It will only do composite, right? So just make note of that, okay? Next, display and button. So we have our dimmer, okay, the clock, uh, button illumination color here. We can choose our button illumination color, wallpaper. All right, so here you have a couple presets for your wallpaper. If you wanted to use your own wallpaper, you're gonna have to download the Kenwood portal app in order to do that. And then from there, you can pick a picture that you want that can be used as the wallpaper. Okay, next, user interface. All right, so on or off on the beat. Sound setup, control, cameras. All right, so let's talk about the cameras here real quick. All right, so if we wanted to assign cameras, we can do so here, okay? All right, so let's go back real quick and let's just take a quick look. So your rear view camera, obviously, is gonna be for your rear. And if you wanted to use the front camera or the dash cam, you can set that up here. Choose the signal if you want mirror on or off. All right, and then enter. A third camera we can use as a side if we wanted to. Now, make note, if you decide that you wanted to, assign these for your side cameras, this radio will not trigger these cameras on the signal, okay? So you would have to manually go in there and turn on those cameras if you wanted to use them. Now, there is a way to do this with an additional part. You would need a camera switcher. Now, the camera switchers are going to have triggers, so you can hook up left and right cameras, and when you hit the turn signals, it'll turn on those cameras, okay? So just make note of that, please. All right, here's your software information. Just tell you what version is running. You can always update the radio. Just check on Kenwood's website to see if you have the most current software running. All right, and this will tell you what software version is running, of course. All right, so let's talk about some more functionality here. Let's go back to the home page. And then from here, you have these widgets and you can move these around. If you want, you can just simply hold this down and then that will allow you to move these in wherever you think is best for you. And then we also have split screen here. So this is nice, as you can see, we have navigation going on the left. Also, we have our tuner, our music source, playing right here in front. So if we wanted to change the radio station, we're able to do that there and we can see what's going on. Our presets are also down here as well. On the left-hand side, a couple different options. So here, this will give you your time and date and then your compass is here. All right, you have your equalizer here. We have NRIX here on the bottom. We'll go over that here in a minute. That's just the weathering for NRIX. All right, so let's talk about this feature here. This is your camera selection. All right, so like we talked about earlier, let's say you are doing side cameras for your blind spots. Let's say you're driving along, you hit the turn signal, you wanna go into your right-hand lane, then you would tap this button here, and that would turn on the camera on the right-hand side. It would appear here, it's black because there's no camera hooked up. So it's gonna be in that small little section there. If you want it to be bigger, you would just tap it. Okay, and that would show the camera on the full screen. Now let's talk about the navigation real quick, okay? This is made by Garmin. It uses Garmin software. Garmin has been the leader in navigation for a very long time. So you have this onboard navigation. This gives you some features that are nice. So let's just go over them really quick. Two finger pinch and zoom in and out, okay? If you're running an Android and you're running Google Maps, that will work. But if you're running an iPhone on Apple Maps, that will not work, okay? So let's go back here to your main menu. Very easy to use, where to, so if you tap here, you can tap in an address, okay, you'd have to spell it out. Unfortunately, it does not do any type of voice recognition for that, unlike, let's say, your uh, Google Maps or Apple Maps will. So normally, if you're using Google Maps or Apple Maps, you would just say directions to 465 North Oxnard Boulevard, and it'll automatically do it for you. This does not have the software to do that. Now, as mentioned earlier, you do get three years of free mapping that you can update on Garmin's website. You also get five years of NRICS. Now NRICS, okay, if we're on our main screen here and we go here, NRICS will allow you to get some weather updates here. Also in your navigation mode, it'll give you traffic and also alert for traffic lights. And then it'll give you some parking information as well. Now I did download the NRICS app and the rating is not very good. It's like one and a half stars. So <laughs> I haven't really used it. I've never used it. I can't say, but it does have a very bad rating and 130 people rated it. Okay, so maybe be wary about that. Let's take a look at some mirroring features. So I'm just gonna go into HDMI right now. I have a phone hooked up to it. Okay, so right now I'm running off of YouTube. This is an ad. Now you can go and run other things like Netflix. All right, because this is mirroring, it's not gonna give you any restrictions. All right, so there you go. Um, as you can see, the picture is nice and bright and vivid. It really does have a good screen. A little hard to tell from the video, but I can guarantee you that it's nice, it's bright, it's got lots of detail. And if you're watching movies off of the screen, you will be happy with it.
Okay, and for mirroring for Android, you can do this wirelessly. So right now I have the phone hooked up. There is no wires hooked up. Okay, so obviously it's gonna mirror what's going on in your phone. Now what makes this really nice and special and different than the iPhone mirroring is you're able to actually control the phone on the face of the screen. So that's a pretty cool thing to do. All right. Now, if I wanna go here, this will take me back to the home page. So I can fully use the phone all from the face of the screen. So that is definitely pretty cool. All right, so let's talk about Android Auto and Apple CarPlay real quick. So you have wired and wireless connections. So let's go with Android Auto first. So we have our navigation here. And as I mentioned earlier, you can pinch in and out for the mapping, which is cool. This is your home button. That'll take you to your applications. Then you're able to do your music settings, navigation settings, and your messaging apps as well. All right, so let's check out Apple CarPlay. All right, so we have obviously our mapping here. Hit this button. These are gonna be your applications that will apply. Again, navigation, like Google Maps, Waze, music, Spotify, you got Audible on here, Pandora, iHeartRadio, whatever you got, regular messaging. And then if you have apps like WhatsApp or Telegram, that will come through here as well. All right, so that'll wrap it up for the demo. Okay, on to the pros and cons, starting with the pros. This has a big, bright, and bold HD screen with optical bonding display to reduce glare. 5-volt pre-outs, parametric EQ, HD radio, and all the high-res audio features that this brings to the table. Two HD camera inputs and a built-in navigation, but this can be a con for some that feel they don't need it because you get full-function navigation on the screen through a smartphone. Because, of course, it costs more. $300 to be exact. So if you fall into this category, the DMX1057XR might be a good fit because it's the same head unit without the cost of the navigation for $15.99. Now the cons, the bezel. No left or right EQing needed for a more accurate staging experience and no signal triggering for a side camera. But besides that, this radio is jam packed full of great features. Kenwood Exelon reference series has been a standard in which all head units are measured. And if you wanna have a head unit with a large screen and built-in navigation, then this is the one for you. Well, it's cause it's the only one on the market, but I guess you can go with one of Pioneer's with the add-on navigation, so that's an option too. But we're gonna give this radio a four and a quarter star, despite being released over a year and a half ago, still a very solid radio with great features. But it's missing a few features that the newer head units have. Kenwood, if you're listening, the knob is a good idea, but please, on your next one, less bezel on the screen. Okay, guys, that's gonna wrap it up. We hope you enjoyed this video. If so, make sure to hit that like button. Again, I'm Josh from Breaker Stereo and Performance. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.